So, <clears throat> very good evening, uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, we thank our Lord uh, and our uh, Almighty God for giving it another opportunity to discuss uh, uh, many things uh, from His wonderful words of life. Uh, and today, uh, as we all uh, have uh, put the message in the group, we are going to study very, very important uh, subject. Uh, you see, and that subject uh, is about the seven angels and the seven churches. So before going to this point, uh, let us uh, read uh, a vision that is mentioned to us in book of Zechariah chapter 4. Okay, let us read verses 1, 2, 3, brother. Uh, go ahead, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. And the, and the angel that talked with me come again and walked me as a man that is awakened uh, out of his sleep and mm. said unto me See, the angel came and wakened uh, Zechariah as a man is waked out of the sleep so this is an awakening subject for many people uh, who feel the tendency to sleep you see so here yeah, the angel came and wakes up Zechariah to come and see a very very important thing continue with the next what happens huh and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and uh -huh. seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. And uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Let us go by verse by verse. Thank you, Peter. So he says, uh, He saw a vision where he was shown seven candlesticks. You see? Uh, you can see here, no? See, this is the vision that was shown to Zechariah. Seven candlesticks. And uh, upon the candlestick, uh, you see, there was a golden bowl, it seems. See? There are seven candlesticks. And upon the candlestick, uh, there is a golden bowl. And from the golden bowl, there are seven connecting pipes to the seven lamps of the golden candlestick. You see? And next, brother, verse 3, brother. Huh? And two olive trees by it, and upon the right side of the bowl, and, and the other upon the left side thereof. Uh -huh. Then they saw two olive trees. One by the left uh, of the, you see, uh, the lamp, and one on the right uh, on the lamp. You see, dear brethren, so this is the vision. So there are two olive trees, and in the center, there is a seven, uh, you see, uh, golden lamp stand. Uh, that one, what we see in the uh, temple, in the tabernacle, in the, you see, uh, the holy condition. The same lamp stand is shown here. But here, the speciality is that upon these uh, seven uh, lamps, uh, there is a golden bowl, it seems. Uh, and there is a seven pipe that is connecting from the bowl to the seven uh, lamps. Uh, okay? Now, read verse uh, 11 and 12, brother. Verse 11 and 12. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And uh -huh. answer. You see, as we all wonder, what are these things? You see, similarly, Zechariah also wondered and asked the angel, Lord, what are these two olive trees? Continue, brother. Huh? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what this be? And I said, no, my lord. Hmm. Fourteen also, brother. Hmm. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Uh, read verse 12 again, brother. Uh. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which, uh, which through the two gold, golden pipes empty, the golden oil out of themselves. Ah, so from the two olive trees, what is coming? It seems golden oil is coming. 
So golden oil is coming through two connecting pipes to the bowl. You see, so this is the entire uh, picture of the vision. See the two olive trees. From the two olive trees, golden oil is produced and uh, the golden oil is uh, coming to the bowl through two pipes. And uh, you see the bowl where uh, all the golden oil is coming. You see, from there to the seven lamps, uh, the golden oil is being supplied by seven pipes. Uh, you see, deep then. So this is what the vision that was shown to Zechariah. So we all wonder what is this. Similarly, the same question was asked to the angel. And see what was the reply that was given. Verse 13 and 14, brother. Verse 13 and 14. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what they be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Ah, so here the angel gives us a clue saying the meaning of the two olive trees. He says the two olive trees are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. You see, dear brethren, just uh, by saying these things, what can we understand? How do we understand this vision? See, we all have been studying the Bible study for more than almost one and a half years. You see, more than 18 months we have studied. Now you tell me, for the Bible, which is the dictionary? Bible itself. Yes, for the Bible, Bible itself is a dictionary. If you have any doubts or any questions, we need to check uh, and cross-check uh, these things from the Bible itself. Therefore, dear brethren, if you have uh, read uh, anywhere else uh, regarding the seven golden candlestick, if you see in the Bible, yes, we have studied about uh, that in the tabernacle book also. But uh, again, you see, the seven golden candlesticks uh, comes uh, in the book of Revelation. Where does it come? Let us read Revelation 1.13. Revelation 1.13. Home brother, uh, you're welcome. Uh, if you can read, it will be very kind. If you can read, if you have network, you can also read. Thank you. Revelation 113. And, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and get about the paps with a golden girdle. Very good. Thank you, brother. So, if you see, here, yeah, the picture of Jesus Christ is shown in Revelation first chapter where he is clothed with a garment and where is he standing? He is standing in midst of the seven, you see, candlestick. So again, the seven candlestick is mentioned in the book of uh, Revelation and Jesus Christ is seen, shown, being in midst of it. Now, what is the meaning of uh, this uh, seven uh, golden candlestick? You see, the meaning is given in Revelation one twenty. Read with Revelation one twenty, brother. Hmm. The mystery of the seven star which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven star are the angel of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which the soul are the seven churches. Very good, brother. Thank you. So, it says the seven stars are the seven angels to the seven churches. You see, see the mystery of the seven stars and the mystery of the seven candlesticks is given here. So, here the meaning of the candlestick is given here. It says 
the seven candlesticks are the seven churches and the seven stars in the hand of our lord represents the seven angels to the seven churches so in the book of uh, you see zechariah uh, we see that there was a golden candlestick uh, uh, which was having uh, seven uh, lamps uh, that means it represents uh, seven uh, you see churches uh, that is mentioned in the book of revelation okay now in the book of revelation which are the seven churches that are mentioned uh, that is given to us in revelation 111 uh, gopal brother please read with us revelation 111 can you read please saying i am alpha and and omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in asia unto ephesus and unto smyrna and unto pergamos and unto thyatira and unto sardis and unto philadelphia and unto laodicea very good so here the names of the seven churches are given again given as Smyrna, Ephesus, uh, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now, why only these seven churches are mentioned here? See, if you see in the Bible, the first church, uh, where was it established? It was established in Jerusalem. That name is being missing. And one of the biggest churches, uh, you see, during the days of apostles was the church of Corinth. Where the church of Corinth is not mentioned. And uh, Rome. You see, Apostle Paul went to Rome, they established a church there. So why those big, big uh, you see, churches, uh, those names are not mentioned? But instead of that one, why the small names uh, are mentioned? Uh, why in the book of, uh, you see, Apostle Paul uh, wrote uh, a letter to the Galatians. Why the church of Galatians is not mentioned? Dear brethren, you see, so this uh, clearly tells us that the uh, names of the book of uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, about the seven uh, churches, uh, is not a literal one. Is not a literal churches. Uh. And what does it mean? You see, how many churches are there? How many names? How many numbers are given? How many churches are there? Seven churches. Very good. Now, what does the Bible tell about seven? What does the seven mean in the Bible? Perfect or completeness. Yes, perfect or completeness. That means it is speaking about not literal seven small churches, but it is speaking about a complete church of the gospel age. So, if you see in the gospel age, in this divine plan chart, since the Pentecost till the, you see, the glorification of the church, that is called the period of the gospel age. And this gospel age is divided into seven parts. You see? Yeah, beginning with the Pentecost and ending at the glorification of the church, this church is divided into seven parts, dear brethren. So, if you see, each and every church mentioned here actually signifies each and every part of the gospel age. Like, for example, you see, the first name that is mentioned in book of uh, Revelation is Ephesus. So what does Ephesus church uh, uh, signify? What is the prophecy that is mentioned in book of Revelation regarding Ephesus? What does it signify if you see? It signifies the first part of the gospel age where after Pentecost, the churches were established in all over the world. It signifies that part of the gospel age. And uh, which is the last church that is mentioned in book of Revelation, brother? Can anybody tell me which is the last church that is mentioned in book of Revelation? Laodicea. Very good. Very good. So, Laodicea is the last church. What does it signify? It signifies the last uh, part of the church that will be living on the earth uh, just before the glorification of the church the christ body so this signifies the last part so while Ephesus signifies the first part so the seven parts signifies the seven periods of the gospel age now let us take some time and understand what really happened in the seven parts of this gospel age what really happened in the period of Ephesus? what really happened in the period of smyrna pergamos Thyatira, sardis philadelphia and Laodicea. 
Okay. Now, it also said that uh, uh, seven stars uh, signify the seven angels to the seven churches. Uh, many people think that uh, the angels that are mentioned in the book of Revelation are literal angels uh, that are literally God is going to send an angel to age, each and every church and is going to preach. Uh. But in the Bible, if you see the angel, the word angel, the word messenger actually signifies human beings. Like, for example, <clears throat> you see, in the Bible, regarding Jesus' ministry, it says, God shall send an angel to prepare a way for the Lord. Okay? And we all know that, uh, who is that, uh, you see, uh, messenger who prepared the way for the Lord. Correct now? Let us read one verse. Luke 7, 27, brother. Home brother, can you read it? This is he oh. who uh, of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Ah, see, this is actually speaking a prophecy about John the Baptist. Here, John the Baptist is compared to a messenger, is compared to an angel. Does it mean that uh, John the Baptist is literally an angel from heaven? Tell me, was John the Baptist a real angel? No. He is a man. No. no, correct. Very good, Dom brother. Very good, Gopal brother. So, he was not a literal angel. So, but he was a human being. But yet, he is called as an angel because he gave the message of God. He delivered the message of God. Similarly, all the human beings who deliver the message of God, they are called as angels. Let us read Luke 9.52, brother. Look, 9.52. Can anybody read? Look, 9.52. And sent message, uh, messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Ah, now you see, he sent messengers before him, it says, uh, now, whom did Jesus send? Jesus, Jesus called angel, angels from heaven and tell him to go before him to Samaria? No. They were the apostles. You see, they were the disciples of the Lord. Therefore, even these are called as messengers. Even these are called as angels. Why? Because they delivered the Lord's message. Read Malachi 2 7, brother. Malachi 2 7, brother. Gopal, brother, can you read Malachi 2 7? Hmm. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Ah, he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. What is done? So the priest in the temple he is called the messenger, he is called the angel of the Lord. Why? Doesn't mean that he is a literal uh, angel. You see, dear brethren, he was in the flesh, he was a human being. Uh, but yes, he was called as an angel because. He had the God's words in his mouth, uh, dear brethren. Therefore, this uh, word angel in the book of Revelation, it actually signifies human beings. So, the seven periods of the gospel age, during each and every period, God actually uses a human being as his angel primarily to deliver his very, very important message. Now, let us come to our point and see which are the seven churches, okay? And what really actually happened and how does it correlate to the seven periods of the gospel age and the seven angels, okay? Now, let us read about the first church. You see, the name of the first church is Ephesus. And uh, 
officials, uh, you see, uh, that uh, first part of the church was during the period from uh, 33 AD to 70 AD. You see, 33 AD means, uh, you see, that is the beginning. Uh, and 70 AD, when the complete Jerusalem was destroyed, during that period, that entire period, is a period of a uh, church of Ephesus. Uh, you see, now let us read actually what happened during the period of Ephesus. Uh, Revelation 2nd chapter, brother, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, brother. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, This thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who uh, walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them uh, which say they are apostles, and, and are not, and hast found them liars and has born and has presence and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted uh, okay thank you for that so it says i know thy works uh, labor and the patience but how much thou hast suffered for my name's sake uh, and it's not uh, fainted uh, you see deeper than this was a period uh, where the churches were established uh, in all the places. It was the initial beginning of the church. You see, there was a lot of persecutions from where? From the Romans, from the Jewish people, from the Gentiles. Everywhere they went, there were severe persecutions. You see, the many were beheaded, many were killed. You see, but yet the church, you see, had that patience and the labor. They persistently, you see, worked hard to establish the churches all over the world. But it says, uh, you see, uh, one, uh, there was one problem with this church. What was the problem? Was that in verse uh, 4, it says, you have lost my first love. Read verse 4. Mm. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Aha, uh -huh. thou hast left thy first love. Why? Why those love the first love? You see, initially when we learn the truth, when we come to the Lord, we'll be having so much of love, zeal, energy. Our minds are not will be clear. But here, similarly, that was the condition in the churches. But slowly what happened, even while the apostles were living, false doctrines began to creep inside the churches. You see, regarding the resurrection, you see, regarding the Lord's death, you see, regarding so many important doctrines, you see, there is false doctrine. Therefore, in verse 2, it says, you see, and thou hast tried uh, them which say they are apostles and are not. Uh, they were false apostles and they were liars uh, who preach uh, false doctrine in the churches. Therefore, many people love what happened. Uh, it actually really cooled down. You see, dear brethren, therefore, Jesus wants them, uh, you see, and says in verse uh, uh, five. What does he say? Remember, uh, read with her. Remember, remember. Therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Ah, see, it says repent, isn't it, dear brother? And therefore, this was the condition of the first church during the apostles. What happened? Apostle spirit, when initially the church was established, this was the condition and the sufferings which they suffered. Now, uh, the second church, uh, you see, the second church name is Pirna. The name Spirna itself uh, signifies bitterness. The meaning of the word Spirna is bitterness. This was a period where the church had a lot of bitter experiences. And this was a period from 70 AD to 330 AD. You see, that time was the primary time of the church where a lot of churches were established. You see, the first uh, period was where the gospel was began to be preached. But in the second period, you, you see, you see the brethren, a lot of uh, physical gathering churches were established. Uh, you see, a lot of troubles were there in the churches. Uh, and uh, many people were poor. Uh, you see, not many rich were come to the truth and all. So, hence what happened? All what they had, they began to sell and bring it uh, 
and uh, dedicate and uh, offer everything at the feet of the apostles. And apostles began to distribute everything clearly as per their needs. Therefore, here if you see in this, uh, regarding this uh, church, it says, uh, you see, uh, that uh, the word poor. Read verse 9, brother. Revelation 2, 9, brother. Home brother, can you read? Revelation 2, 9, is it possible? I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Ah, you see, know... it says, thank you, brother, thank you. It says, I know thy works, tribulations and poverty. You see, regarding the worldly things, the church was completely poor, but yet they were rich in faith because they distributed everything freely, dear brethren. And that is the time, you see, there were severe persecutions from the Romans. Especially, there was an emperor called as Diocletian Emperor. He took a decision to completely eliminate all the Christians. And he began to slaughter each and every Christian. So let it be woman, child, young, old. He did not care. He began to slaughter everybody. And 10 years, there were severe persecutions. Therefore, you see, it says there, in, you shall have tribulation 10 days, but uh, uh, Jesus wants us to be uh, faithful. Read Revelation 2, 10, brother. 10th verse, brother. Home, brother. Fear none of those things which the soul suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be uh, tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a uh, crown of life. Uh, you shall have tribulation ten days, children. You shall have tribulation. How many days? Ten days. Is what is this ten days? Uh, you see, for a prophet, a day means uh, what? Yeah. Very good, brother. Very good, very good. See, a day means a year. So, 10 days means 10 years. So, which is this period? If you see, 303 AD to 313 AD, very severe persecutions was there. That is the time, really, dear brother, the church approved their faithfulness. It says, be the faithful unto death, I will give the crown of life. But in all this period of the churches, Satan already began to do his work. You see, in verse... 9, it says, at the last part, you see, and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. In the first church, what did you see? They are liars. They are false apostles. But second church, you see the degradation. What has happened? It has become the synagogue of Satan, it seems. It has become the church of, uh, you see, the devil. The devil has already come inside the church. Then how? Not literally, but through false doctrines. Okay, let us come to the Third church. You see, the name of the third church is Pergamos. You see, <clears throat> the word Pergamos means elevation. You see, lifted up. This was the period in which, uh, you see, the papacy was lifted. That means the rise of the Antichrist. We studied about the period of Antichrist now. The study about the Antichrist, triple six. You see, huh? we have studied now. Who is Antichrist? False system. Very good, brother. The false church system. Very good. You see, that is the you see great antichrist. That false system began to be established and began to rise to supreme power. You see, during this period. Therefore, if you see verse nine, it so it said, though at the synagogue of Satan. Read about this Pergamos church. It says, verse thirteen, brother. Read, brother. Uh, go, brother. Read verse thirteen. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Right, eh? Even where Satan's seat is. That is where, where is Satan come and dwelt. Huh? He has come inside the church. First he was coming and going. Now he has come permanently and put the seat. You see, he has come and seated in the church means completely the church is corrupted with false doctrines. This was a period from 313 AD to 1157 AD, brethren. So, what happened was that, uh, you see, uh, so many people began to revolt against the Pope papacy system. But uh, 
there was no proper support you see many people were persecuted you see many people were tied and died as martyrs they were burnt at stakes you see therefore he says you see uh, verse uh, continue with the same verse continue 13 verse continue with the and thou holdest fast my name and and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where satan dwelleth ah uh, oh my faithful martyr antipas who is this antipas if you see anti means against pa actually that, that is actually anti pa pa means what papa pope you see father uh, so one who is against the pope you see dear brethren so there were some people who were against the papal system even they were totally annihilated but uh, next verse you see who is there in the church balaam is there verse 14 hmm. balaam is there but i have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of balaam who taught balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication mm, that means in this church who is there balaam is there uh, sorry balaam in numbers the book of numbers old testament there you see balaam tempted the people of israel to commit sin against god similarly here the papacy system was tempting the children of god to commit you see fornication adultery like what a spiritual you see the leave the christ and love the lord you see the god of this world love the world you see dear brethren so here this was the condition of the rise of the antichrist now let us see the fourth church the fourth church is thyatira the period is 1157 to 1367 now you see ad this was the period of the antichrist the highest ruling you see period of the antichrist the peak when was antichrist in peak it was in during this period therefore it says you see about this church when it says it says that uh, verse 20 verse 20 brother read verse 20 revelation 220 brother uh, home brother can you read revelation 220 not with a standing i have a few things against thee because the sufferers that woman jezebel who is called herself a prophet prophets to prophetess prophetess to teach and to see see those my servant to commit fornications and to eat things sacrificed unto idols ah you see in the church who is there ha huh? jezebel is there it seems are there now have you read about jezebel anywhere in the bible gopal brother ashish brother home brother have you read about go jezebel in the old testament uh, i think in uh, first king chapter 9 uh jezebel's husband what's the name of husband's name jehu ah uh, ahab Oh, yes. uh, Ahab was a wicked king. Jehu was the one who kills actually Jezebel. Okay. Now you, when you're free, you kindly read this one. After this one, oh, both of them, both are, both are Gopal also. It's very interesting story. We'll have all these studies in the future, God willing. These are all higher studies. Beautiful, beautiful picture is there. See, in Old Testament, Jezebel is there. But how come she is there in the church? In the New Testament, that means. here it clearly shows uh, there will be a split of jezebel in the churches what is the split of jezebel there in the old testament jezebel was against ha uh, elaija she persecuted all the god's prophets and killed them slaughtered them everybody you see in fear elaija ran away 
from Jezebel and hid in the mountain. And when he was in the mountain, in a bro, you see, uh, at the side of the uh, brook, uh, you see, who fed uh, him? If you see, uh, a crow came and fed him, isn't it? Uh, you see, a crow came and uh, uh, fed him with the food. For how many years, if you see, three and a half years. So, the same three and a half years is the period of Antichrist. You see, what has happened? The church, uh, uh, Elijah class, did not have sufficient effort, but God supported through the, uh, you, who, the crow, yeah? the eagle swings, Revelation 12 chapter, all these things are there, but just I'm telling you shortly. So similarly, here also in the churches, what happened? Uh, the paper system got mingled, joined hands with Ahab, the civil government, and uh, began to persecute the church. You see, and that time, Elijah, Elijah was not in the city itself. He was very far from the city. So, the church did not have any prominence during the period of Antichrist, and it was totally isolated, you see, from the civilized community. Therefore, during the period of Antichrist, you can't recognize the real church, because why? Everywhere there are false churches. So, this is the the period of Antichrist, the Titeria period. Okay. Now, let us come to the fifth uh, period. The fifth period is the period of Sardis. The period is from uh, 1367 to 1517. Okay. And uh, Sardis uh, is a period before Reformation. Okay. Now, read verse uh, 2 of chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, Gopal, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Very good. So, here what it says, uh, you see, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Many of the faithful people were persecuted and everybody were killed. You see, there were only a few people who were remaining faithful. You see, and hence it says, uh, you see, uh, Make them perfect, establish them and strengthen them, whichever is, uh, you see, left. Uh, uh, then, uh, you see, verse uh, uh, 4, verse 4, brother. Uh. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they uh. are worthy. They are worthy. So few people were there. These are the people who began the reformation movement. Therefore, it says in verse 3, you see, hold fast and repent, you see, and don't lose thy first love. So this is about the Sardis period. Now, let us read the sixth period, you see, the Philadelphia period. It was from 1517 to 1874. You see, uh, <clears throat> the Philadelphia period. This was the period of reformation. Now, what happened in this period? Verse uh, 8. You read, brother. Verse uh, 3 8. Revelation 3 8. Home, brother, can you read? Revelation 3 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can sort it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Ah, you see, ah, what does uh, God say to this church? I have set a open door which no man can shut. Which was this door that was opened during this period? You see, during the Reformation, the Bible translation. In the publishing of the uh, Bible, you see, that uh, began immensely started uh, during this period. Even the Bibles were printed in all the languages, distributed freely, you see, and none could stop this flow of the Bible, even today. You see, so what happened? Uh, this door was opened by Martin Luther, but once he opened the door, nobody could shut it. Even today, the brethren, nobody could shut this. So therefore, it says, I have opened the door and nobody can shut it. Okay, this is the Philadelphia church during the Reformation. Okay, 
Now, the seven church. See, regarding these things, more detail, we're going to read it in a few minutes. Okay? The seven church is a Laodicea church. This is the last period of the church. Okay? And this is from 1874 till the completion of the church, dear brethren. So, till the completion, till the glorification of each and every body members of Christ. That's what this period signifies. Okay? And uh, what is the condition of this church? Read verse 15, brother. Gopal brother can read it. Verse 15. 315. I know thy works, and thou, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou read cold or hot. Mm. The condition of the church is that they are neither hot nor cold. What is this hot or cold? Hot means what? Bubbling. Cold means what? Silent. The condition of the church, the condition of the Christians today is that they are not even zealous for the Lord. Neither also they are in the world. They are very neutral. You see, they are neutral Christians. You see, they are very smart. They are not even in the world. Not even in the Lord. You see, now is this correct? Many people think this is a very good condition to be. Because we can uh, uh, jump there also. We can jump uh, here also. But what did Jesus do? Continue with that. Huh? So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, just because you are neither hot nor warm, I will spew you. Jesus rejected all these churches, children. All the Christians of this period were rejected by our Lord because they are neither worldly nor godly. Okay? Now, rejected, spew means what? God decided not to choose them as his mouthpiece. Hence, if you see, the truth, what you are listening, can't be found in any of the churches. It can't be found because they are spewed out. God has chosen each and every individual separately as his mouthpiece, as his messenger to declare, you see, God's words. And see the condition of the church. What, what is the attitude of the church? Verse 17. Uh. Because thou sayest, I am rich, I am increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art rich, and miserable, and poor, and blind and naked. Aha. See the condition of the church. They say, we are rich. We got big, big buildings. Big church is there. So many people are there. Big car group is there. You see, we got big organization. Big TV channel. Big music. Uh, beautiful songs. Everything is there. But, uh, huh? that's what they think. But what does the Lord think about them? It says, don't know not that thou art miserable, thou art in a very poor condition, you are blind, you are naked, you are blind that you can't see even the Bible, the truth in the Bible. You are so naked that you don't want to even have the righteousness which is Christ is giving today. If, what did Jesus say? Verse 18. Huh? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayst be rich and white raiment, that thou mayst be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint uh, thine eyes with thy uh, eyes, so that thou mayst see. Correct. Uh, see, God, uh, you see, informs to Christ to buy eyes salve, to open eyes of an ancient means to take the Holy Spirit. Uh, therefore, uh, there is no Holy Spirit of understanding. Therefore, Christ advises, take the Holy Spirit of understanding. And moreover, you see, what does uh, Jesus say about this church? You see, verse 20, brother. Huh? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Ah, Jesus is standing at the door and knock means he already returned. He's already come in the parousia, seventh church period. Where is Jesus? Uh, Jesus did not say, I'm very far. He said, I am here knocking at the door. But read about the previous church, the sixth church. Where was Jesus? Verse 11. 3 verse 11, brother. Hmm. Behold, I come quickly. Hold ah, You see, behold, I come quickly. quickly. So he's not at come in the sixth church. 
Read about the fifth church. Where was Jesus? Uh, verse 3. Uh. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not uh, know what hour I will come upon thee. I will come as a thief. Did he come in the fifth period? No. He said, I will come as a thief. Sixth period, he said, I will come quickly. Eh, that means seventh period, he's already here. Eh, got it, dear brethren. Therefore, we say, we are living in the day of the Lord. We are living in the parosha of the Lord. We are living in his presence. Jesus Christ is already returned in 1874. We are in his period. So this will continue till the completion of the church. Now, let us come to this vision of Zechariah. Now, we understood what the, actually the seven lamps means. Okay. So, okay. Now, there in Zechariah, we saw that the golden oil, you see, the golden oil came from the olive tree through these two pipes to the bowl. What does it mean? You see? Now, you tell me, Huh? These seven candlesticks means the church. Okay? But there is a bowl above the seven lamps. That means there is a bowl above the church. You tell me who is above church? <laughs> who is above the church? Jesus Christ. Very good. Jesus Christ. So this signifies our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah. So, church is getting the Holy Spirit only through Jesus. Got it? Da? Now, where is Jesus getting the Holy Spirit? Da? Huh? The golden oil. Where is he getting the golden oil? From the two olive trees. So, which are the two olive trees? Let us read Revelation 11, chapter 3 and 4. Revelation 11, chapter 3 and 4, brother. Please open your Bibles. Revelation 11, 3 and 4. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy and prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. There, ah. Ah. Continue, continue, continue. there are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Underline the same verse that is mentioned in Zechariah 4, chapter last verse. These are the two olive trees. Standing before the presence of the Lord. Now you tell me, he says, these are the two witnesses of God. You tell me, which are the two witnesses of God which God has given to us? The two witnesses of God. Tell me. The two witnesses, two portions, you see, two portions, two witnesses, two parts. Tell me, think. Old and New Testament? Very good. That is the two parts of the Bible. Very good, brother. See, Bible is having two parts. This is the witness which God has given us, not any two persons. You see, God has given the two witnesses after Jesus leaving this earth, after the apostles and all died, they kept these two witnesses on this earth. This was witnessing about God and his plan. How? In the sackcloth. It was not translated. It was in Latin language. But once the translation happened, you see, it beautifully, beautifully began to be witnessed. So these are the two olive trees. Means, oh, in the olive tree, what oil comes? You tell me. What is the oil that comes from olive tree? Olive oil. Very good. Now you tell me, in the Bible, olive oil was used for what? Think olive oil was used for what in the Bible? For anointing. Very good. For anointing. Very good. For anointing. So this anointing represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, this Holy Spirit is coming to the church, you see, through Jesus. Now, what does it mean? That means, if the church has to understand the Bible, it is only through Jesus. None of the real churches of God can understand the Bible 
without Jesus. So, if you want to, if the church has to understand the Bible, you see the Old Testament, New Testament, what is required? Holy Spirit is required. And how does the Holy Spirit come? It comes only through Jesus. And how directly? And directly God gives us that. Huh? Through the seven pipes. Uh, let us see now the seven pipes. We saw the seven periods of the gospel. No? Let us see which are the seven connecting pipes. Who are the seven angels through whom God gave us the very, very you say, strengthening food. Huh? Got it, brother? Clear, no? Huh? See, clear, no? See? The Bible, Bible is a dictionary. A book of Zechariah. The answer is given where? Book of Revelation. This is how we read the Bible. Here a little. There a? Little. Very good. Search the scriptures. Rightly divide the word of God. Therefore, you see, now, who are the seven pipes? Who are the seven angels? The first angel to the first church of Ephesus is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, you see, was a chosen vessel of the Lord, especially to the Gentiles. You see, Peter was chosen for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, Apostle Paul was chosen. You see? And uh, yeah, the church of Ephesus itself was found by actually Apostle Paul. He wrote more than 14 letters. Nearly 50% of the New Testament is written by whom? By Apostle Paul. He was the first person to explain the details of the Old Testament and how it relates to Jesus Christ in the New Testament. He suffered so much and he encouraged suffering for Christ also. And he was, you see, beheaded in Rome. So he was the first person who was used as a messenger of God in the first period of the church to establish the churches in all over the world. Okay. Now, second angel, who is the second angel, who is the second messenger of God? Used by the Lord, if you see, it is none other than Apostle John. You see, the Apostle John was uh, the closest of all the disciples, uh, you see, to whom? Uh, eh? To our uh, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you see. So, the book of Revelation was written by him. I wrote other, other three books also. And he was the last of the apostles, uh, uh, you see, uh, to die. And he gave emphasis... Uh, on uh, Jesus uh, as the Son of God. Therefore, if you see the Gospel of John, well, majority in the Gospel of John, it says, uh, Father, 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 and Son of God, Son of God, Son of God. The relation between Father and God, uh, Father and the Son is beautifully shown uh, in uh, his Gospels. Uh, therefore, he wrote more about love because he was a loving disciple of Jesus Christ. And because of his faithfulness, he was isolated on the island of Patmos, from where he got this vision of revelation and wrote everything. So, this is a, he is the second angel. The third angel to the church of Pergamos, you see, is Arius. You see, the third pipe, second pipe, the third messenger through whom God gave the messages, especially the strong food during those period was Arius. Now, who is Arius? If you see, Arius was a Presbyterian in Alexandria church. He denied that, uh, you see, uh, bishop, uh, you see, uh, position. He was offered to be a bishop, uh, uh, you see, of Rome, but uh, he denied uh, that uh, offer. And uh, he highly esteemed Jesus and God above everybody, you see. And he supported that man should never be worshipped. Even the Pope also is a man. And, uh, you see, and... Uh, he clearly showed that Jesus and the Father are separate, separate. The both are not one and the same. He clearly showed that both are separate, separate. You see, and because of this one, what happened? There was a person whose name is Athenaeus, who was opposite to Arius, who claimed that the Father and the Son are one and the same. The, the debate between both of them began to so high that uh, it began to destabilize the stability of the government. Hence, the emperor called for a meeting and saw that many people supported Athenaeus' theory. Hence, uh, he was, Arius was declared as a heretic on uh, a cannibal island. Cannibal means where uh, um, human beings are, uh, fleshes are eaten. So, he was isolated in that place, sort of thinking that uh, he would die in a few days. But, uh, but unfortunately, 
you see you can tell fortunately in one year he converted the entire people on the island to be christians the emperor was so happy that immediately invited him to the kingdom but by the time uh, he came back uh, he passed away so this is the you see third church areas uh, who stood for the doctrine of uh, you see uh, the true identity of christ and god and uh, the fourth uh, angel is peter waldo peter waldo was a very rich person he understood the bible and revolted against pope and said he is not god and he he, he bashed everything against the pope's false doctrines and all hence he translated the bible you see into from latin to french it is very rich man much you know what did he do he sold everything and gave it to the poor he sold all of his uh, you see uh, assets and everything he translated the bible and uh, he booked a big ship where uh, completely was loaded with bible and uh, thought of giving it freely to the entire people you know as soon as this news came to the king uh, sorry the pope uh, pope immediately purchased the entire ship entire ship with the ship the bible also he purchased and uh, he brought peter waldo and put him on stake tied him to a pole brought all the bible and broke the ship into pieces brought all the wood and uh, put the bible also and in the center peter waldo was tied and burned alive you see dear brethren that is how the price they have paid for the faithfulness just imagine you know how did i get uh, this king james bible what we reading today you see the bible what you reading now how did i get you know peter waldo at that time prayed to the lord lord i beg you please i beg you please open the eyes of the king you know how did god hear his prayers dear brethren after so many years you see a king by name king james married the you see a uh, sister of pope and that sister and that uh, woman was never uh, uh, faithful to the king the emperor always she used to quarrel and uh, threaten the king anything you would tell she would tell that i will tell my brother pope and he will do this thing this thing punish you and all these things and all so this king saw 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 he could not tolerate her so hence uh, he decided to divorce her and kicked her out of the house mm-hmm. and that is the time there was a very big friction between pope and the king then king decided he is giving me so much of torture now what i can do for the pope then he understood the pope doesn't like what bible so the pope hates the bible that is the time that he called all the professors scholars and made them sit in his you see in his court and translated the bible in 1611 the king james version was out this is how we got the bible dear brethren it is not so easy so let us not treat the bible very carelessly very precious thing what we get so many blood so many sacrifices have gone this this the value which we give for the bible it's uh, we can't pay the price for it so he is the fourth church and the fifth church john wickliff the morning star of reformation you see he translated the bible in english he discovered the bible is the sole basis of faith accused the church of uh, interfering political affairs more than 200 doctrines he attacked against the mass he clearly told that pope is the antichrist he was the first to identify that the pope is the antichrist and pope ordered you see to destroy all his writings even the pope hated him so much that after his death nearly 43 years after his death his bones were taken from the grave and uh, it was burnt and ashes were thrown into the river thinking that he should not even come in the resurrection so he is the fifth angel the morning star of reformation dear brethren and the sixth angel is martin luther you see he was the one you see the one who did the reformation actually dear brethren uh, martin luther was a monk his father was a you see farmer and he wanted his son to study well and and uh, he actually studied well and became a lawyer but as he began to grow and he began to study that guilty conscience used to prick him 
that I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm, and uh, he could not overcome this guilty feeling. He went to Rome, even on, you see, on a knees, you see, traveling to Rome, you see, uh, on foot. And after going to Rome, each and every steps on the St. Peter Square was, was you see, uh, climbed with his uh, knee. Uh, and he came to the Pope and uh, kissed his feet, uh, pressed all the relics, uh, did all the orthodox things told by the church. Uh, fasting, prayer, he was a very hefty man. Doing fasting and prayer become very bony. But even after that one, he could not realize forgiveness of sins. That is the time he decided to read the Bible. And you know what is the verse that test him? Read Romans 1.17. Romans 1.17. Please read, brother. Romans 1.17. Read with her. Roman one seventeen, for ah. therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Ah, the just shall live by faith. That is the point that he flashed in his mind. The just shall live by faith, not by works. So by doing fasting, by doing praying, by going to religious places, by chastising himself. Does it justify me? No. Then he began to realize what all the Pope tells is a lie and began to study it. Brethren. And you know what happened? By studying, he got 95 points against the Pope. Very, very strong points. You know, the soul dies. Hell is not a place of torment. And the Lord's Supper has to be taken only once a year. You see? And the resurrection, the dead soul. You see? Uh, the soul dies, uh, and uh, various things was clearly told first by Martin Luther. You know what did he do? He made a big list of 95 points against the Pope and uh, nailed it to his church on October 31st, 1517. You know why on October 31st? After October 31st, what comes? What is the next day after October 31st? November 1st. Very good. What is number first, actually? Among Christians, what do they celebrate? <laughs> it is All Saints Day. Number second is All Souls Day. So whoever doesn't go to the church will definitely come to the church on November first. Because they had the belief that if you touch the holy man's cloth, they will become holy. If they kiss the holy man's pen, what will happen? They will become holy. That was a false belief. But you knew that morning everybody will come. In the night he put this thesis. Everybody came and read all these 95 theses and understood that the Pope is a liar. You know what happened? Within one week, the entire Germany, all the Roman Catholic churches were demolished, made into pieces. Pope heard this news. You know what did he do? He gave him arrest warrant. He took the arrest warrant and burnt it in front of everybody. I won't believe unless I am being proved from the Bible. If you prove from the Bible, then only I'll accept orders. Even if one and stone is a Satan, I won't agree it all clearly. Dear brethren, this is how Martin Luther started the Reformation. Seeing his boldness, all the kings were surprised. All the kings began to support Martin Luther, dear brethren. You know what did he do? He was a monk, a father, not getting married. You know what did he do? He married and began to run a family in the monastery among the fathers only. And seeing him, everybody began to marry. And you see, and thus the concept of a bishop not getting married was totally abolished. That is how the Protestants actually was formed. Dear brethren, Martin Luther printed the Bible in the first page itself. He clearly boldly printed. The Pope is the Antichrist. But today we see that one. None of the Bible say that Pope is Antichrist. Why? They have taken it off. Why? They have changed. The, the Protestants have diluted at the other end. So this is the sixth church. And the seventh and the very, very important of all the angels is our brother, very, very beloved brother, you see, Brother Charles Taze Russell. But the Charles Taze Russell was born on February 16, 1852 at Pittsburgh. 
as like we were, he was also among the nominal Christians. He was going to a congregational church. You see, till 15 years, he believed the false doctrines of the churches, hell, soul, and all these things. And all. As a child, his mother was very strict with him. He made him to grow to be a religious child. And whenever he used to return from the school, he used to take charcoal and write it on the wall saying, don't sin, repent, or else God will punish you in hell. But as he began to grow, this question used to ponder him a lot. Why God is going to you see, put everybody into hell? That By the time his mother passed away. And that is the time, dear brethren, that he began to seek the answer from the Bible. And he began to preach to many people. And one time, when he began to preach, he could not answer the questions which an opposition person asked. He was a layman, he was a people, he was a person who did not believe in God. He could not convince him. Then he began to put a question. Why? Why so many things are there in the Bible? What is the answer for this one? Then he left the Bible, he studied the entire religion of this world. Whatever religion, Hindu, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, entire, every religion he studied. And came to the conclusion... The God of the Bible is much better than all these gods. And again came to the Bible and with an open, clear mind began to study the Buddhism and really understood that God is not a God of tormentor. God is not a place of, God is not a tormentor. He is not created hell as a place of torment. And then he began to slowly understand the God's character. Then why if God is not is a, uh, God is not a Tormented, what is the meaning of hell? The meaning of hell was grave. If uh, hell means grave, then what happened to the souls? That is the time they came to know that the soul dies. You see, dear brethren, uh, the soul dies. If the soul dies, when is the salvation? Through whom is the salvation? It is only through one man, Jesus Christ. One man, not one God, one man, Jesus Christ. So through one man, how sin entered the world? Ransom was found. And uh, the salvation for the uh, uh, entire world through Adam was found. He was so much of thrilled with joy and all. You know, what was his age? 16 years age, dear brother. He was a multi-millionaire at that point of time. His father used to have a chain uh, provision stores. Like today we have in Food, uh, food World, Big Bazaar, Big, Big provision stores. No, Big, Big malls. You see, his father used to have so much of... Uh, you see, provision stores. He was a, actually his father was the founder of a, so much chain stores concept. Okay, so that is the time that when he heard all these things and all, he decided to tell to entire world of Christians these things. So you know, what did he do? At that age, he called the entire pastors of America, entire pastors of America, many many thousands. Everybody were invited for entire one month. All their expenses were taken place. You see, taken care of every expenses, given food, literature, everything, and told them the entire given plan as we have taught you for one and a half years, dear brother. Much more than this one. They were all taught for one month freely, giving paid, paid and taught. At the end of this one, you know, Brother Russell asked them, please go and tell this truth to the churches. You know, what is the answer that they gave? They told, Son, you are a very small child. If you start preaching all these things to the churches, nobody will come to the churches. And nobody will give us offerings. And what will happen to our whole livelihood? So we can't do all those things. You leave this matter to us. We will take care of in our own way. You go and mind your father's business, they said. And everybody walked off with him. And that is the time that Brother Russell had two decisions to make. To follow the heavenly father's will. Or to do the earthly father's will. That is the time he decided, if I leave this one doing the God's will, then I will be losing a very, very great opportunity which God has given to me. And he decided to sacrifice his entire property, life, money, everything, dear brethren, and uh, dedicated his life in preaching the word of God, dear brethren. He began to preach his word of God without even asking a penny as an offering, dear brethren, even till his death, None of his sermons, even a small hint or a point, was told about, you see, giving tithes or offerings. But he collected offerings. But it was only of a free will offering. 
those who saw his ministry, you see, those who voluntarily dedicated, you see, he collected, he collected from them. Not that he began to preach for money, dear brother. It was totally free of cost, you see. And uh, uh, he believed that this is Lord's work. And Lord will definitely help in whichever way it's possible. Because Jesus said, freely have you got, freely so you preach. You see, dear brother, and, and uh, brother Russell's sermons were so immensely, you see, circulated and so famous in America that uh, weekly more than 4,000 newspapers published his sermons. He was one of the greatest preachers of 1870s, dear brethren. He, he preached more than 30,000 sermons. Some of the messages, he went to more than three hours, dear brethren. You know, when we make a convention, you must have watched uh, some of the convention of the brethren. You see, we all gather, though, there will be 100 people, 200 people, you know. But Brother Russell's convention was so massive, thousands of people used to gather here, brother. So usually when we travel, how do we travel? We travel by two, three people, five people, ten people, uh, in a car or in a bike or in a bus. You know, Brother Russell, you see, whenever he used to travel, he used to, all the brethren used to go for the convention. You know how? Uh, they used to book the entire train. Not one bogey, I'm telling you. Uh, this is not all funny things at all. These are very real facts, I'm telling you. It's not a joke. Uh, real facts that has happened. We used to book an entire train. You know, what was the train called as? Trans Transcontinental Express of the Bible students. That entire train only dedicated for the Lord's work, dear brother. Wherever it went, <laughs> uh, preaching of the word of God. You know, see this photo. This is the world's first Christian Preacher preaching for the 30,000 Jews, dear brethren. The 30,000 Jews were invited, you see, free of cost in this uh, hippodrome, very largest hall in America. And uh, they were promised that uh, the Jewish people about the Zionism. They read about the subject of Israel now. The same subject was spoken by Brother Russell. He gave them the hope for the Jews uh, that uh, your God's kingdom shall be established on earth. Uh, you will be God's chosen people. On earth and in Israel, God's kingdom shall be established. All the ancient verses will come back uh, resurrected on this earth. Seeing this wonderful sermon, you know, it went on to hours together. Everybody stood up and clapped their hands and said, you are the first Christian preacher to, you see, encourage Zionism. You said, dear brethren, and he was the one who began the Bible students movement. And you see, he published these volumes and all. His writings, you see, dear brethren, was so immense uh, that, uh, and uh, during that, those days, one of the major things uh, which Brother Russell did was a photo drama of creation. You see, have you ever seen Charlie Chaplin movie? Anybody, have you seen Charlie Chaplin movie? Yes. Okay, it doesn't have uh, audio. It has only slides, you see? Yes. This concept... Brother Russell was the one who did this one in color. I'm telling about 19th. He, he passed away in 1916. You see, during that period, he did it in color. He was the first person who to do it. You see, dear brethren, and uh, uh, he started the magazine called as Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ, uh, Christ Presents. The first volume, six million copies were given freely. You see, and uh, <clears throat> uh, um, he came to the uh, India also, he came to the world tour, he, he did a world tour, and he had more than 220 ecclesias all over the world. And he was elder for all these churches for his entire period. He came to Japan, he came to China, he came to India, he came to Korea, he came to Kolkata, he came to Chennai, um, and uh, he came to Bangalore also, he came to India also, uh, Mumbai. And uh, there's a place that is named after him in India, Rasalpuram. Okay, he went to Sri Lanka also. And uh, he wrote so much of writings in his lifetime that it was more than 39,000 pages. You see, 39,000 pages, like a newspaper. I'm telling you, such type, 39,000 pages. Average, if you see, he has written four pages per day. Imagine to write four pages per day, how much we need to sit and study and dedicate. 
I'll show you the photo of his library. You will be stunned. Very huge library, full of ladder here and there and there and all. Okay, so that is his dedication, dear brethren. And uh, you know the world's largest printing press during his time. You know which was the world's largest printing press uh, during that time. It was America's dollar printing machine. After that one, it was his, his uh, printing machine that was the world's second largest printing machine, dear brethren. He put so much of books and gave everything and distributed, dear brethren. You see, such was his dedication, dear brethren. You see, therefore, about him, it is mentioned in the Bible also. Whatever we preach today, whatever we have learned, it is none of our own preparation, dear brethren. We are all his servants. We are all his stewards. God has prepared this food through this angel, through this pipe, he has given us the Holy Spirit. We just are dispensing to you. Just imagine the thousand years where the lion will eat straw. Did we ever imagine? How did he come to know? Did we ever imagine that the soul dies? Did we ever imagine that hell is not a place of torment? Did we ever understand that the Lord's Supper has to be taken only once a year? Cleanly shown from the scriptures, dear brethren. The Antichrist, the Trinity, the second coming. All this uh, beautifully preached, dear brethren. See about him, it is mentioned in Matthew 24, 45. Matthew 24, 45, brother. Uh, Matthew 24, 45, brother. Matthew 24, 45. Gopal brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Whom then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in a due season? Uh, see, to give them meat in due season. At the return of our Lord, Matthew 24, chapter, the signs of second coming, second presence. At the time of return of our Lord, there will be a faithful and wise servant. Whom the Lord shall make him, you see, master of all his goods. Jesus did not leave any property on this earth. He left only one property, that is the word of God. The entire authority on the Bible was given to whom? Was given to whom? Pastor Russell. But Russell was given the entire authority of the Bible. Whatever things you see, so many things which can never, which can never be understood, God revealed to this uh, Seventh angel, the faithful and wise. Many people were wise during those days, but not many were faithful, dear brethren. But the Russell has this wonderful quality. But you know, as Satan began to spoil the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, similarly, you see, but the Russell's name was also spoiled by corrupting his name only after his death. Kindly note, it is only after his death, dear brethren. You see, as brother Russell. You see, passed away. You see, from this side of the veil to that side of the veil, you see, there was a judge who was along with Buddha Russell. He had formed a trust. You see, he manipulated all the doctrines and all the documents and made the trust to himself. And he went away from the, you see, Bible students and formed the movement called as, you see, Jehovah Witnesses. This one was formed in 1917. You can see, you see, this is the Wikipedia encyclopedia of the Google. 1917, Joseph Franklin Rutherford succeeded Charles Taze Russell. After death of Brother Russell, he succeeded. You see, as the, this one, and in 1931, you see, you can read here. Huh? Huh? The name Jehovah Witnesses, uh, uh, different uh, to the two groups, uh, you see, was given there. You see, see, okay, you can see now. See, in 1931, adopted the name uh, Jehovah Witnesses. So, uh, while uh, there are differences between the two groups, lot of differences there. So, uh, this one, why I'm sharing, uh, okay. So, because you need to understand that we are Bible students. We are not uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Okay? Jehovah Witnesses, they 
after the death of Brother Russell. It was only formed in 1931. You see, if you see in the Google, it says that uh, it was formed only in 1931. You see, 1931. How come uh, Brother Russell be the founder of it? If you search in Google, it comes that uh, Brother Russell is the founder of Java. Because you need to go internally and search. Many people come to the conclusion there itself. Open the door, read it properly. It was formed only in 1931, after many years after his death, dear brother, it is only because of the false doctrine. Therefore, the doctrines of uh, Bible students and Jehovah's are totally different. We are none of them. We got no contact or no relations with them. So this has to be very clear in everybody's mind. We are not Jehovah's Witnesses. That is the reason I am telling all these things very clearly to you. Therefore, dear brother, the seven angels to the seven churches, you see, are the mediums through which uh, God is dispensing <clears throat> the, you see, uh, food uh, yeah, to the is a real church. Uh. So, therefore, you see, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is coming to the church uh, through Jesus, through the seven angels. So, this is how we have been receiving the truth. May Lord add his blessings to this uh, words. May Lord bless his uh, uh, understanding of the scriptures. Uh, and we thank you all for uh, listening to the word of God uh, till now. If you have any doubts, any questions, you can ask. Brother. Any doubts, any questions, you can ask. Okay, no hesitation. Any doubts, any questions, let it be anything you can ask. Brother. Any any questions, brother? Home brother? Gopal brother, any questions, any doubts? Uh, brother Raj, sorry for interrupting. Hmm. Could you please mention that verse in even in Old Testament, which we which we uh, assume is the yeah. pastor Charles Russell, with full of ink. Yeah. yeah, Ezekiel 9 chapter. It's given in the Old Testament also. That's in Ezekiel 9 chapter. Ezekiel 9 chapter. That is a different study altogether. Uh, but anyway, we can read one verse. Uh, Ezekiel 9 chapter verse um, 2. Ezekiel 9, 2, and 3. You can read, brother. Gopal, brother. Sure, brother. Okay. Ezekiel 9, 9 2, and 3. Ah. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with, uh, with linen, uh, with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they ah. went in and stood mm. beside the uh, brazen altar. Very good. Brother. So this all got significance. Brazen altar means uh, the ransom, the power of the ransom, the one person who stood for the ransom, the, you see, the other uh, six who were against him, that is the other... Uh, uh, worldly pastors, uh, worldly preachers were against uh, Brother Russell. Brother Russell, uh, brother, uh, stood for it. Uh, he was the man with the writer's ink on. Why writer's ink on means he was famous for his writings. Dear brother. During these days, he was a very, very famous person for his writings. Uh, so many newspapers in so many languages used to publish every day his sermons. Weekly, I'm telling you, more than 4,000 sermons were published uh, in uh, more than 4,000 newspapers. Uh, so that was his uh, immense uh, blessings which the Lord gave. And uh, one more thing I want to tell that uh, so many Jehovah Witnesses, you see, they have left their organization and they're joining us. You know, so many people are there in, in my house, in, in Mysore. We got ecclesias in all over the Karnataka. You see, in Mysore, in Davangere, and uh, even in my place also, so many people who left those, that corrupt organization and listening to that, they also have shared their experiences that uh, this is totally different from what we have heard there also. This is the real truth they have mentioned. Any further uh, uh, questions, brother? Any any other thing you want to say? Kabul, brother, any doubts? No, brother, this is my first time. <laughs> I heard uh, such messages from uh, like uh, Revelation from Revelation, so I need to go through once again, and I will ask, brother. Please, brother, I'll send you the notes also. I'll send you the YouTube link also. Please go through it, okay? 
Okay, brother. Okay. Ashish brother, anything else you want to say? Nothing, brother. Nothing. Okay. We'll uh, finish with a word of prayer, brother. Yes, brother. Okay. Gopal brother, can you offer a prayer? Yes, 